Paul. Mario. We've you... had two not exhausting episodes, but man, like you get to a topic and it's just like all of a sudden, let's just it's like a it's like an onion. It has layers. It's all of a sudden peel back the onion. It's just more layers. Ogres There's... ogres have layers. So I've been in the car with you and sometimes that's accurate. Oh my God, <laughs> Erroneous! <laughs> Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. Paul, we talk, and it's weird because, you know, we go back and forth and we mention mm-hmm. things to each other quite a bit, but it's like we've talked to each other for so long. Mm-hmm. Nine years, man. Nine years. I it's know. crazy. It's only been nine. I felt like I've known you forever. But nine years, we go back and forth and we mention things to each other, but it's like we understand where we're coming from. So it's yeah. like when I mention something to you of, oh yeah, you know what? They're at twenty they're at twenty seven. You know, they're they're primed to trade out of there and pick up an extra pick because mm-hmm. You know, uh, that team wants a fifth-year option on a quarterback. Just – it's big yeah, bang, just, boom, but we say right. it, but we don't really explain it. You know, when we sure. – so in this episode, we really kind of want to highlight certain things that you want to look for in the draft itself, mm-hmm. um, what certain teams might look for, why those teams are looking for those, what's the difference between the top ten picks in the first round versus the last ten picks in the first round, uh, going on the new CBA versus the old CBA. Mm-hmm. And then also we wanted to let you guys know that we will be hosting a draft show. I know a lot of you were asking this and that in the third. We are going to be hosting a draft show. But even before that, Paul and I, along with the Hall of Famers, are going to have a nice little treat for you guys as far as a mock draft. You know, we never do these. I hate we mock drafts. We never do mock We I never do it. Them. Because you pick 17 different guys. Guys do – you know, mock draft 20.0, and then all of a sudden, you know, when the draft happens, they end up posting something on Twitter that says, see, I called it. Yeah, you called it on your eighth, 18th try. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So that total different story for another day. But the point is this. Right. We want to show you guys what we look for, what you could look for, and what are some things that will guide you through the draft that will be a lot of fun. I think, I think this draft is kind of playing out like in the top four picks – is kind of playing out like almost every draft, right? Where the QB needy teams just happen to find themselves at the top. So the beginning of this draft is a little bit different than what we've seen um, because the quarterback play, like, don't get me wrong, right? I don't think Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson are really all that much, right? I'm not a big fan. I haven't been. Um, you know, just because they're the best draft, the best quarterbacks in the draft doesn't mean that they're going to be good quarterbacks. Like we, you know, go back to Blaine Gabbert. We'll go back to, you know, there's some drafts that were just, oh, this is the best guy. He's the most pro ready. And then they're terrible. You know, like, it's yeah. just, I feel like this is one of those drafts. Good news is that somebody from inside the division is in that top four and just traded away their quarterback. So good news for Buffalo. Um, because I don't think the QBs in this draft are all that great. With that being said, these these organizations don't care whether this no. is the best QB class uh, right now or not. They need a quarterback. They've made their bed. They have to lie in it. So you look at Jacksonville, you look at the Jets, and you just have to imagine QB, QB, right? Like, this is this, these are slam dunks. QB, QB. We're not crazy, right? Yeah, the question is just who. Like, that's the, that's the problem that's going to lie there because you talk about Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, you talk about Wilson, you talk about fields. Like, where do you want to go? Like, what right. direction do you want to go? Mm-hmm. So, which makes that number four pick, you know, I mean, obviously, consensus, Lawrence will go number one. I mean, I think that's a consensus. I think, everybody. yeah, I think that's Unless I think something that's right. crazy comes out where he was, like, on, on a on a circle bed with cocaine and a couple of hookers. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you know, Trevor Lawrence is going to be not going number one to Jacksonville. I'm just I mean, say. Jacksonville has tried this before, but. I, and they've taken the first QB off the board uh, in the past, 
but I think this is different. They never had the number one overall pick where they've picked a quarterback. Like they've gone Bortles at three. They've gone Byron Leftwich at seven. Blaine Gabbard at ten. What? Oh God! I just, I just, my soul hurts a little bit. What? Oh, you mean when Jacksonville gift wrapped? Khalil Mack to the Bills oh at four. Oh my god, I know. And they got Sammy Watkins. That was the that was what mm, nah, that was our first draft show. That was our first draft show. The Bills tra- the Bills traded up. We're like, oh my god, we got Mack. Like we were just in. We were in. And I'm sitting there in. going, they traded a future first. They went to go get a quarterback, didn't they? That's weird. Nope. Anyway, so Jacksonville Jaguars is going to get Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. That seems to be the consensus number one. Obviously, this is right. where these quarterbacks get taken. You guys know yep. that. So Zach Wilson, I'm thinking Zach Wilson and Justin Fields going two and three. Everyone and, and, knows. And I, that's that's a flip. I know right? it doesn't matter. That's a flip. The, I'm, to me. It's both. And then there's right. who's the horse from, uh, uh, or or the the guy that ever he's like the he's like the one guy that everyone's talking. Uh, Trey Lance from North Dakota mm-hmm. State. Okay. You know, he's another guy that could yeah. sneak in there, you know, depending on how the Jets and the Niners, which is such an interesting dichotomy right now because you have Robert Saleh, who was on the Jets, was just with the Niners. Mm-hmm. So you got a little, you know, sleight of hand might be going on. There might be a few conversations going on there where he's talking to Shanahan going, who do you want? He's obviously yeah. not going to tell him, but they're like, listen, right. I, I really like this kid. Mm-hmm. You like that kid. Okay. Blah, 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 whatever. So, I mean, two and three, there might be a little – funny business going on i mean I san francisco is no is is no rookie to trading picks like i know they traded up right but i think they traded up knowing that they were going to get either fields or wilson and they're probably fine with that they're fine with both of them yeah yeah so yeah. you're gonna see that number four which makes number four such an interesting pick because if there was a team that needed draft picks to supplement their capital that is the oh. hottest spot i mean mm-hmm. The the Atlanta Falcons pretty much are the are, are the hottest girl in school that went to this the dance stag, mm-hmm. and everybody's going for that that position. So whatever Absolutely. guy you want that's not a quarterback, you can get him at four. Atlanta is so primed to trade this pick, right? If they you should. Are- if you're Carolina, Carolina is a great team. They're sitting at eight. They're not going to ask Atlanta to fall too far uh, back. Uh, Atlanta could uh, trade uh, those picks again. Uh, uh. Uh, all right, Paul, we talk about draft and draft trades and how certain teams try to jockey. To, oh, they could trade up with them. They have familiarity. And some. However, that always changes the landscape when you talk about divisions. So we talk about the Bills trading with the Dolphins, the Panthers trading with the Falcons. It's different because you're now giving a fourth overall pick to a guy you got to face twice a year. Yep. And that always drives price up. I'm not going to say that they'll never trade, but – they usually trade those fifth and sixth round picks to each other. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, sure. but you, it's tough because you have to ask yourself, number one, um, when we trade this, you know, like when Tampa traded with Buffalo and Buffalo took Josh Allen, they're not even yeah, saying they conference. They not worry about it. You ain't going to yeah. worry about it. Like, when are we going to see him? Once maybe in every five years? You know what I mean? It's not going to matter right. for us. However, for a team that you're going to see twice a year, that mm-hmm. that drives the cost up because you're like, I don't want to face this guy twice a year. For a non quarterback, does it though? It for does. Non quarterback. I think it. I think, uh, it, ma- I think it matters not bit. not as much as a quarterback, obviously, but I think it matters. I really I, think it does. I look at Carolina and say, you just traded for a quarterback. They're going to take their shot. They really. Carolina was convinced that they were going to be a good football team this year with Teddy Bridgewater, and McCaffrey got hurt, and it just didn't happen. No. Right? They were pretty convinced that they were close. So. I think they take a swing. I don't think they settle at eight. I think they take a swing. No, they'll they'll take a swing, but I think it'll be either with Cincinnati, Miami, or Detroit. Right. Okay. And if you're moving right. up one spot, I mean, obviously I, a I, lot of these things could happen. I'm just I just wanted to bring the point up of trading within the division is always a little bit more risque than it is. Uh, right. You know. I and I'm with you there. I, I I do agree with you. But if Atlanta holds on to that pick, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd be a little surprised. I, I would think be too. The, I don't I don't think the fourth pick helps them fill out the rest of their roster. I don't think the fourth pick gets them, you know, out of the top 10 next year. I don't. I I don't think they're one player from being beyond mediocre. No. They they're not a good football team right now. They they need they need more assets and they can't afford any of them. The so, Falcons have 3 fifth round picks, 2 sixth round picks. 
There second, you go. Second, third, and a fourth. There you go. So they will get out of that pick for a future first. Mm-hmm. So you got to ask yourself, what team is is willing to trade up a future first who thinks they're close? That's probably a Packers because they already drafted their quarterback of the future. They don't need uh, one. They don't need a top 10 pick. It's a 29. That's a huge jump. No, my point is this. 29 and a future first. Yeah. Okay. You're talking okay. about the, I mean, but you were talking about Carolina that traded a former what third overall pick. Mm-hmm. So, what was Darnold second or third? Darnold was second or third second. overall pick for a sixth, a second, and a fourth. <laughs> so, yeah, we've seen this play out. But yeah. I mean, okay. the Falcons, as much cap jail as they have been in, they would be who to get rid of that pick and acquire more 2022 picks because they already mm-hmm. have enough this draft. They don't need any more. They got nine. Mm-hmm. They need they need future considerations. Probably the Packers would be a team that would do that, right? But okay. I don't know who the Packers would go there. You know what I mean? What, right? If they would, that's so well, funny. I think that brings us to the fifth pick. That's Cincinnati. <laughs> Cincinnati's sort of an odd one. Burrow played great uh, when he was in there. They lost Jonah Williams to injury, so their first round picks were not available to them. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so I think Cincinnati's probably a better football team than. Uh, then they showed. Yes. So them being at five is a gift. They're not going to give that up. Um, you take best player available there. You can you can improve that Cincinnati team instantly at five. Just take the best player, whoever you think that is. Could give be a that wide receiver. Man Jamar Chase. Give yeah, Joe Burrow. Could be a wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. All right. Could be could be a wide could receiver. Be wide, could be. I mean, you, you think about that division. You know, we talked about it on an episode last year, Paul. We were talking about how do you defend Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. We talked about the linebackers that were. I mean, there was Pittsburgh, there was, there was Cleveland, and there was Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Cincinnati didn't have any linebackers that could defend. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you take a linebacker at five, impact player at five, give Joe Burrow somebody that he's comfortable with, or you go with another offensive tackle for him. Keep that boy right. upright. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Then you got the the Dolphins six, Lions seven, Carolina at eight. So it's like all teams that need. Offensive help. Well, and let's not forget Miami traded up, right? So Miami is sitting there going, we need some. Yeah. I, you look at it and say, okay, well, one, two, three quarterbacks go one, two, three. Okay. So if we get to six. We get either the second or third best offensive player in this draft. That's not a quarterback. Yeah. Sure. Go for it. You do. Go because- for it. You think about it in this respect. When, when they made that trade from Miami and Houston, I mean, they were gifted that first-round pick because it was from sure. Houston. So then right. you go, they're like, we can't go to four. We don't have enough. We don't want to give up enough. like Because mm-hmm. Atlanta knows the position that they're in right now. Right. You know, with that trade being happening, Cincinnati's like, we're another AFC team. We were gifted this pick, like you said. Now yeah. Miami's like, Where's, where can we go? Well, let's talk to Philly. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're not in the same conference. Yeah, let's who's go. terrible? <laughs> Who's terrible? Let's go. Let's go with Philly. Who's terrible that does not need a quarterback? Um, because Philly has Hurts now. They're gonna they're gonna ride it out with Hurts. That's so it. That's what it seems like. So then Detroit, they already have their quarterback. Mm-hmm. They probably could Jared Goff. Open. Yep. Yep. Carolina has theirs now. Broncos yep. have. They kind of have lock, but they could go for quarterback. And then Dallas had just re-signed theirs. So mm-hmm. all these other teams are going to be going after skill positions after the first three picks. That's why Atlanta's right. that's why Atlanta's pick is so intriguing for everybody. Right. Right. Yep. Um, Absolutely. And a Absolutely. point of note to mention, uh, and I'll let Paul talk about this. The old CBA versus the new CBA. Yeah. In the old CBA, the top ten picks, it was it's not going to be the same now, Paul, because those might be more – are they more or less likely to be traded because of the new CBA? So players now earn whatever their fifth-year option is. Mm-hmm. I, that's the fairest way to say it. Yeah. So I think before, it, getting you know getting pick number 10, when the Bills traded pick number 10, it was kind of a big deal because it was the last pick at a really expensive fifth-year option. And the 11 through 32 were way more affordable. Um it was a much cheaper fifth year option. So while teams might not have always paid attention to that, it was part of the equation. When you were going to trade into the top 10, you were going to be getting a very expensive fifth round option compared to the rest of the draft. And you had to weigh whether that value was really worth it to you. Now, of course, if you're picking up the fifth year option, it means that things went well so far. 
So, you know, you have to, again, it's all part of the equation. But now the new CBA is basing it off of, there's three different factors in playing time. So players can earn a higher fifth year option based on playing time or Pro Bowl selections. So when when Tremaine Edmonds got voted into the Pro Bowl this last season, everyone's like, yeah, Tremaine. That was like a $4 million swing for Tremaine Edmonds. That made him more expensive in 2022. So we can all (laughs) applaud and clap. Good job, Tremaine. But homie made some money. Like the Pro Bowl is now, it it means something now to these rookies. Um, So if you're getting voted to one Pro Bowl or multiple Pro Bowls, on that rookie contract, it's going to reward you in the fifth year option. Whereas before it, it didn't, it didn't matter. You no, were just, it, gonna, it was just based off of draft position. So they've incentivized that, but again, it's sort of a funky formula. That's um, not really something you could talk about until the option year is, is coming about. Yeah, exactly. But, but, and that's why you would see a lot of these fran I mean, not the reason, number one reason, but you'd see a lot of these franchise quarterbacks that were drafted and, there, you know that if it's a franchise guy, you're drafting your franchise guy, mm-hmm. you're going to resign him anyway. So the fifth year option is moot at that point. Right. So you didn't care one through ten if you were taking a quarterback. That's why. Right. Um, who got drafted at ten? Um, uh, for you just Mahomes. Mentioned it. Well, Blaine Gabbert. Well, Mahomes. Or Mahomes Gabbert was at, yeah. at three. Mahomes yeah. is at ten. Yeah. Um, and, and Lamar Jackson was at thirty-two. Right. Yeah. And the and the Ravens drafted Lamar Jackson saying, hey, let's get the cheapest option we can on a quarterback. And then the CBA got renegotiated and he gets one of the more expensive contracts because he had previously made a Pro Bowl and was an MVP. So exactly. Whoops. But you're able the fifth round option is is still in play for a lot of teams. Yeah. OK, you're going to get an impact player because you're drafting in the first round. However, the other part is this. You can exercise a fifth year option and franchise tag them as many times as you want. Mm hmm. I mean that Basically. happens for a lot of players, but you could franchise tag the guy as much as that happened with Kirk Cousins. So mm-hmm. he was franchise tags what twice? Yep. Because they just didn't want to extend. But that all being said, the top ten picks, there's gonna be a litany of talent that mm-hmm. goes and just like in every draft. But just to see that, that there's gonna be three quarterbacks taken one, two, three is gonna be very, right. very interesting to see. And I'm I, of the top ten, I'm so curious to see what Atlanta does. Well, I think this draft is a little different, Mar, because there's so many unknowns in 2021 that those top 10 picks, teams might be big swinging if they're like, listen, we don't know about, like if they're sitting at 18, 19, they're like, listen, we're not really confident that we're going to hit on this pick unless we get to 12, unless we get to 10. You know, like there's some teams that are going to be swinging big to try and get these picks because they they really might not be sure that they've got their first second and third round totally yeah. on lock so if we're looking at this this is where this hurts a team like the falcons who have nine picks yeah this is where it hurts a team like the eagles that have 11 picks in this mm-hmm. draft yep um so you got the broncos have nine picks cowboys have 10 mm-hmm. um you know i'm just going through vikings have 10 mm-hmm. patriots have 10 I mean, Patriots always have like twelve picks by the end of the, the end of the day. I mean, that's not right. a big deal. Belichick always loves doing that. But that being said, you you bring up an interesting point. We said that Bean, actually, you said Bean was going to wait for the market to come to him to sign a lot of these one year deals. I'm referring to right. a previous episode. So what right. did you saw not only from the Bills, but from a lot of teams signing one year deals of a lot of these players because of the cap going down and the in, and the uh, uncertainty of what's going on in the draft. Right. I guarantee you, if if that if what manifest if what manifests is what Paul is saying, is that if a lot of teams are like at eighteen going, we got to get to twelve, we got to get to eight, we got to get to ten. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see a lot of picks given away in this draft, right? Unless the teams are really, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. You're going to see a lot of 2022 and 2023 picks traded for teams Big to time. move up because yep. of the unknowns in this draft and. They're going to want to see tape on, and they think everything's going to resolve, or resume back to normal by the time 2022 mm-hmm. and 2023 happens. So I don't see a lot of picks in this draft getting traded. Right. Unless well, you're getting an immediate return. If you're trading a player, like Paul, I'll give you an example for the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. have a fourth round pick. Mm-hmm. Does a team, would it be smart for the Bills to pick up a fourth round pick for Devin Singletary? Just putting it out there. I don't know, man. You're probably drafting a guy who didn't play in 2020. 
I'm, uh, all I'm saying is that a team would a team be willing to give a fourth round pick for a two year player? Oh yeah, in this draft. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah okay. yeah. Right. Third, fourth, fifth round. Like if you look at the list of players who are traded for f- third, fourth, fifth round picks, that's precisely what these teams are doing. They're getting rid of their picks and picking up known commodities. Yeah. You know, Devin Singletary for a fourth is very real in this draft. Like, but my point is this: I, I I know I'm kind of contradicting what we just said that you wouldn't trade for any picks in this draft because of the unknowns, but not having a fourth round pick is kind of a big deal. It gives you another chance to take a swing. Plus, you get a four year deal compared to a Devin Singletary two year deal. Right. So, well, I I think there's something to be said that you know if you're looking at trading up in the draft, the Bills have to get a fourth round pick, right? Because if you're going to trade up, you're probably dealing your third. Right in this draft, you're probably dealing your third round pick this year yes. because it's the last one before all those conditional picks come in. And then the fourth and fifth and sixth round picks start to become less and less valuable because of all those conditional picks that get added in. So, you know, you got to get a fourth if you're going to trade up in the draft. So that's what I mean. That Devin Singletary, you know, I know we talk about it and people are like, why would you do that? I'm the reality is they you kind of have to put it on the board as a maybe. Yeah. Kind of have to put it on the board. I mean, it's maybe. not it's not a hateful thing to happen. I mean, that's what happens with players and teams a lot of times. Right. Um. Nothing against Singletary as the player. Love him no. as the player. I'm just saying yeah. that's those are some of the business decisions that happen. And what Paul was mentioning with the compensatory picks, they happen at the end of the third round. Mm-hmm. So this is why getting a third round pick prior to a fourth round pick is so huge because there's a bunch of picks. Now let's let me just back that up real quick and try to explain. The Buffalo Bills lost Manny Lawson and Jordan Phillips last year to huge deals, both to Arizona and Miami. Now, if they didn't sign Mario Addison, Vernon Butler, Quentin Jefferson, they would receive compensatory picks that would have been available in this draft. Mm -hmm. Now, because the contracts they signed offset the contracts that they lost, the players that they lost, they weren't awarded any compensatory picks. Right. Now, that that is what he's talking about. All those compensatory picks happened at the end of the third round. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, however many there are, I can't remember how many there are for this. Hold draft. on, I'll, I'll be able to tell you, right? So okay. if we have 32 picks, so what pick would end the third round? That'd be 96, right? Mm-hmm. 96 would be the last pick. Okay, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine picks that are compensatory in the third round. So just as an example, uh, New England owns the last pick in the third round. They own pick 96. OK, um, the first pick, the Jacksonville, who would own the first pick in the third in the fourth round, they don't go till one oh six. Right. Mm-hmm. And it just gets more and more. There's more and more compensatory picks as you go through the draft. Um, you know, so like the same thing happens. There's, you know, uh, there's a bunch in the fourth round. There's a bunch in the fifth round. So those later round picks become less and less valuable because of those conditional picks just dilute the pool. Yeah, and for the Buffalo Bills, um, they had Shaq Lawson, Jordan Phillips, and Kevin Johnson. They offset they offsetted that Mario Addison, Quentin Jefferson, Vernon Butler, as I said. But plus, they also added AJ Klein, Daryl Williams, and Tyler McAvich. Mm-hmm. So those were the ones. Now, if you look at some of the players, it's interesting: Tom Brady, Philip Rivers, Teddy Bridgewater, Byron Jones, Jack Conklin, Dante Fowler. Mm-hmm. Um, the, th- the three, the top three names are quarterbacks. Yep. Now, Buffalo Bills planning ahead, planning ahead, not saying if Mitchell, Tr- if, if, I'm just saying, if Dable happens to leave and he brings Mitchell Trubisky with him, he's going to sign a deal that's a lot more than two and a half million dollars. Yeah. Unless the Buffalo Bills offset that deal, they'll, they'll be awarded a compensatory pick in 2022. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yep. That's just, how that works. Just throwing that out there for everybody. So why don't we get to the bottom 10 yep. of this draft, bottom Mark? Bottom 10. So the bottom so 10, bottom... just giving everybody, so one, wait, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. So the Jets at 23. Saying so mm-hmm. we start with the Jets at 23 yeah. from Seattle. This was part of the Jamal Adams deal. Yep. It goes Jets, Steelers, Jacksonville from the Rams, Cleveland, mm-hmm. Baltimore, New Orleans, Green Bay, Buffalo, Kansas City, and Tampa Bay. Right. Really important to note, the Jets, that will be their second selection in the round. Mm-hmm. And also the, the the Jaguars, that will be their Jaguars. Sorry, I can never say that name. 
Uh, that'll be their second pick in the round. Now, Paul, tell me and tell the nation why picking at 23 and 25, having that be your second draft pick is really, really interesting for the NFL draft. Those are very tradable picks. Yeah. They're, no, That's, no, no, they're, they're very, very tradable. tradable but picks. here's my, here's, here's what I was trying to, we were trying to go back to our Bill Polian point that we make all the time. Oh yeah. So Bill oh Polian. yeah. Yeah. So uh, most NFL teams have between 15 and 18 players marked as their first round. Right. So when I say they're tradable, here's what I mean. The, Scouting departments, when they develop their draft rounds, they don't put 32 players on the board. They say, okay, these 15 to 18 players, those are our first round players. And it's not because they don't want to grade 32 players. Most teams don't see 32 first round picks. Nope. Like you grade the talent, you're like, there's 15 to 18. And that could be for a variety of different <laughs> needs, whatever the case is, right? So when they're looking at their board, pick 23, 24, 25, teams that are still like maybe in the top half of the second round, they may look at it and say, whoa, wait a minute, hold on. There's still a guy that's on our board. We might be able to go get him, right? He's not going to make it to us, right? But we still have a first-round player on the board. Let's make a deal. Let's get out of the second round. Let's get back into the first round and grab another first-round rated player. You know, Reggie Wayne is the one that Bill Polian talks about all the time. And that's how Indy ended up with Reggie Wayne. He just kept slipping, kept slipping, kept slipping. They looked at it and go, he's our last first round player on the board. And we are not comfortable with the rest of that position with where they are on our board. Let's go make it happen. Right? So I, I think that's what makes 23, 24, 25. So fascinating is teams start running out of first round players. Yeah. You're still in the first round. You're still 10 picks before the end of the round, but teams have run their boards out at that point. And there's a couple outliers that might be there. The teams are like, listen, let's go get him. As a first round player, didn't think we were going to get him. He's still on the board. We can make it happen. Let's go get him. And, and that's what 23, 24, 25, those picks are so fascinating because mm -hmm. that's what happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Very Absolutely. tradable. When I say very tradable, that's what I mean is teams are willing to jump in at those picks because the, their first round boards might be almost empty at that point. Yeah. And the fifth year option is also a very enticing thing. Exactly. You, have to, you have to have it on a position that you'd want to exercise a fifth year option. Now you talk about a left tackle quarterback, you know, tackles are so fascinating to me Corner. Mark, because tackles are so fascinating yeah. because like you see these 34 year old veteran tackles signing for decent money in the NFL and you go, well, why you're sitting at 18? Why don't you just draft a tackle? Have you seen the tackles drafted in the last five they, years? They are they're, they're a different mold. It's they're a long a game. Mold, it's a yeah. long game with tackles. You know, like it's a long game. You're gonna wa you're gonna wash out more tackles than you keep. You know, so are you gonna throw that first round pick at the best chance? Well, you could, or you could just pay you know eight million dollars to you know nine year veteran tackle. And uh, just say, well, uh, it's good enough. Ah. Circling this back to the, the Buffalo Bills, the Buffalo Bills pick at 30. There are five first round picks that go within the division prior to going to Buffalo. This is probably why some of the discussion with trading up has been approached. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got two from the Dolphins, two from the Jets, and one from New England that are going to be going within your division. Yep. And that's what usually happens, too. You try to skip some of these teams. So mm -hmm. Buffalo, that's why Paul said at 20, Chicago, at 21, Indy, at 22, Tennessee, because you're jumping yeah. the Jets at that point. Right. It's an interesting bit. You talk about make a phone call to Arizona or Vegas because you're jumping Miami at 18. Mm -hmm. those, those two teams are at 16 and 17. Yeah. You want to say, can we make another call to the Vikings? 30 mm -hmm. to 14 is a stretch, but you're going to be yeah. skipping New England at that point. Yeah. All these so, things matter. They all matter. But here's the, here's the brilliance of that. If you call Minnesota to try to skip New England, NFC team. If you call mm -hmm. Arizona to skip Miami, NFC team. Mm -hmm. you, know, you call Chicago. You call Washington. Um, yep. There's a nice pocket there. Yes. Right? Yes. This so is the way the board worked out. Those are the other trade-ups that you want to talk about, not only trading into the bottom 10 picks in order to try to get a fifth-year option on a player that maybe is still on your board that you don't think you can get, the likelihood of trading those picks for the Jets and the Jaguars is so phenomenal because 23 at 25, 
the Jets and Jags could trade out of those picks and give some team a fifth-year option. Mm-hmm. Plus, the fact is this. They hold the 33rd and 34th pick. They hold the first right. two picks in the second round. So right. they're not – wherever they fall, it's not a big deal. Right. It's really not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because those compensatory picks don't start till the end of the third round. Yes. Right. Picks one – that's why rounds one, rounds two, and rounds three – those are the picks that every GM wants because again, the pool gets diluted the further and further down you get, you know, um, the good news is you can trade compensatory picks now. So those conditional picks you can trade, um, which maybe we'll see Buffalo acquire a conditional pick instead of getting a third round pick Mm -hmm. or a fourth round pick. You know, if they're going to trade a player for a pick, maybe they get a conditional third round pick instead of a fourth round pick, you know, like maybe that's the deal Uh, in either case. Right. Buffalo has done a phenomenal job of leveraging their first round players, because let's look at this real quick. Let's just go back to the bean era, right? The bean, bean McDermott era, the McBean era, right? McBean. Let's go with McBean. Let's walk through the first round picks, right? Only one of them hasn't made a pro bowl. It's that Oliver. All the rest have been pro bowl players. Allen pro bowl player, uh, Tredavious pro bowl player, Edmonds pro bowl player, Diggs pro bowl player. Oliver's the only one that's the outlier. I think Jefferson would have been one. Yeah, well, I mean, he's played so low a snap count. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Justin. Justin Jefferson? I think if, if the Bills didn't make that trade, I know we're t- it's completely different, but if the Bills don't make the trade to Diggs, I think Jefferson probably makes the Pro Bowl. Not in this offense, man. No, Not I in this offense. So. I don't, nah, nah. He I'm had good. 88 catches with Kirk Cousins. You don't think he gets more from Allen? <laughs> No, I mean, I'm saying it's interesting because you talk about – now we talk about past relationships with teams. Now, the mm-hmm. Buffalo Bills, they traded up with uh, with Baltimore to get the ad, to get to Edmonds. They mm-hmm. traded with Kansas City. We already know that. Yep. You know what I mean? If, if Kansas City only gains one spot by trading with the Bills, they're not going to do that. That's not a connection. You talk about right. the connection with Carolina. Carolina is at eight. They're not getting that's out of there. That's too much. You're yeah, not doing anything with that. Um, Tampa Bay is – Behind you, you already have yep. familiarity there. You're not going to do yep. that unless you're acquiring 2022 picks, which I don't mm. believe. Arians doesn't like draft picks, but no. Arians is going to be there forever, and neither is a lot of those AARP hold, card holders that are going to be done. Arians leaves when Brady leaves. That's just – it is what it is. Yeah. Arians isn't going back yeah. to rookie quarterback. They're not going to give up future it. picks for yeah. for this draft. You I mean, in order just to, to – I mean, to do what? To skip Kansas City? Yep. I mean, you when you hired Arians, you knew we will never be drafting a quarterback. We're just going to ride this until it explodes. That's absolutely that when you signed Arians, that's what you did. Like that's nail in the coffin. There. I would you say never the, the prime landing spot for anybody though, Paul, is going to be twenty eight with New Orleans. I mean, why? If we, if we talked about a team, I mean, they they again twenty eight. I get it. You know, twenty eight. Like, they have two thirds this year, mm-hmm. so they can acquire. I think they get more future draft consideration because Loomis has butchered the salary cap with them so much. And it's got to stop at some point. But you're you're losing a starter and can they afford to lose a starter? Well, let's Like let's, their their last two picks, I mean, they they got Ramsick and Lattimore the last two drafts, right? Like you did a good job. You did good. I mean, cuz they, they had two they had two first round picks in 2017, Lattimore and Ramsick. I mean, if I'm if I'm New England, and I want to skip the Bills, yeah, why not make a call? Because yeah. the next pick that the Saints have are sixty. The next pick that New England has is forty six. Right. So it's not that bad. It's, it wouldn't be that far of a drop for it's them. Not that bad. So right. If you wanted to skip a player that you thought you think the Bills are going to take, if you're New England, and you want to have a second pick, so that the Bills take the seventh player in the AFC East. <laughs> Of the Isn't first that round. crazy? It's Isn't crazy. That crazy when you think about that. It'd be insane. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, but winning, winning, winning is great until you get to the NFL draft. Ah. You know, that's the truth. Like the draft, the draft is where you know you kind of reap what you sow. If you want to win, you need to be ready to either make moves to get the players that you want, which I think we're all very comfortable with with this organization, right? You just have to trust whatever they're going to do. They've proven that you can trust what they're going to do. You may not understand it at the time. We argue about it all the time, you know, but you have to trust what they're going to do. And if they're going to trade back, it must be for a good reason. If they're going to trade up, it must be for a good reason. They at least have their finger on the pulse, whatever it is. Yeah. And last but not least, Paul, 
Is there any team that you feel in this draft that's one player away? No. Because those are the team. You look at Green Bay. You look at New Orleans. You look at Baltimore. You look at Cleveland. Are those are the teams that you could see that will skyrocket skyrocket up the board and give away future picks because they think they're one player away. Green Bay is a Green pretty Bay's close. wide receiver away. They're they're pretty close. Pittsburgh Green Bay hasn't drafted a wide receiver in the first round since two thousand and two. Like they're close. Green Bay's close. But it's but that's a lot of assets to give up, it especially is. when you, but you draft a wide receiver because you got Jordan love sitting there eventually. Exactly. Right? Like you make, you make that investment. We've but, seen this know, story far, play out before. <laughs> right. Right. But how far would you go? Right. No, like that's, the, that's, the only, that's the only consideration. I mean, if you're, if you're green Bay, you're at 29, obviously you'd like to skip um, Chicago at 20. Mm-hmm. You'd, you'd love to skip uh, where are the, Minnesota at 14. But then you're also asking a team to drop that far that earn those picks. So that are six and asking, ten, seven and nine. If we're asking who do I think is a player away, I think Green Bay is a player away, right? Okay. If I'm asking what organization thinks they're a player away, I think Dallas thinks they're a player away, but they're already at ten. <laughs> Dallas, I'm sure, is convinced they're a player away. Kyle Pitts it's always convinced that they're just a player away. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying Kyle Pitts every day, just to hey. know everybody. That's fine. All right, y'all. That's fine. I hope you enjoyed the preview of the draft episode. I mean, those, those are some of the things that we commonly mention on episodes all the time. That right. Hopefully, you have a better basis of uh, of what we're talking about because we tend to fly through it really fast when we're talking. So, um, well, and the draft the draft episodes go fast, right? They're very fast moving. So, yes. when we go in and we're starting to talk about things at the draft, it's important to know the line of thinking that we have. Are we going to have a panel for the draft show? We literally haven't even talked about this. Um, are we going to have a panel for the we're draft? Gonna show? Okay. We're going to have a Sweet. panel. Okay. We're going to have a panel. I'm going to I'm going to dig up some of the ghosts of Christmas past and we're going to have a panel. <laughs> All right. And we're going to have some fun with this bad boy. Okay. With the nation. Um, I'm down. Did, does the nation do they want Drew? They want Drew back? <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. They were getting Drew was getting the smoke in the comments section. He had all the year. smoke. All of the smoke. All the smoke. All the time. But it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, time. it was it was a great time. And things move fast, but you know, it's the only place where I think you're gonna get Bill's specific draft coverage. Like oh, because yeah. when we talk about when we talk about the picks, we're not really talking about how it benefits the team. We talk about how that's changing the draft board for Buffalo. Yes. You know, and as you know, where is Buffalo? Where can they trade up? Where's their needs? How does this change the rest of the draft board? So we really do try and give you the best breakdown of how the board is falling to Buffalo. Um, so that way, when you get to their pick, we don't know who they're going to pick, but we think we'll get you around where they're going to be. You know, like yeah. it's a riot. It's like, a lot of fun. For example, per PFF, I just want to say this really quick. Let's say. Let's say Zach, they have a mock draft. Zach Wilson going to the Jets. Okay. That impacts the Bills, another rookie coming in. Mm-hmm. They also have Atlanta trading with New England, New England trading up to four to get Trey Lance, the quarterback from North, North Dakota State. So yeah. they already have another year of Cam. So you got Cam in there, you got Tua, and now you have a, a rookie quarterback coming in in place of Sam Darnold. So how does that impact Buffalo going into the 2021 right. season? So that's, yeah. how, that's how we do it. That's how we roll it. So, right. Um, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Wait, it's going to be fun. It's a lot of fun. All right. All right. Hey, good week, Mar. <laughs> Definitely. Mm-hmm.